everything you've just seen has been created using ShapeMuse in just a few minutes. Now ShapeMuse is a free Blender add-on that is super duper easy to use that basically lets you play around with shapes, mainly to create cool looking coasters or jewelry of all types. Now it comes with a whole bunch of shapes to start with for the outside or you can use your own profiles. So let me show you how to get started with it. To begin with, head on over to the link that's linked down in the description. It will take you to this Gumroad page here. You can see that it is completely for free. So you can put in a zero or a three here if you want to support the project. Click add to cart. It'll give you a little zip file and let's get that installed. Now here in Blender, I'm in a precision ready Blender file. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about there, go and check out that video. It's also linked down in the description. But in a nutshell, make sure that your unit scale is set to 0 0.001. If not, everything's going to be a thousand times bigger. And that's not exactly great for laser cutting and 3D printing. To install Shape Muse, head on over to Edit, then Preferences, go on to Add-ons, then Install, find that entire zip file that you just downloaded, and click Install Add-on, then make sure that you turn on Shape Muse, it might automatically turn on. Let's close this, and then you can tap N to open up your side menu, and here you'll find Shape Muse. Now Shape Muse is a geometry node, which is basically a Blender modifier. So we're going to select some mesh, because you need to be able to add a modifier to some mesh, and then let's click Add Shape Muse. So there we go, we've got started. You'll see that right this minute is all just curves. This is done for performance. So if we go on over to the modifier properties, we're gonna go through all these settings. Trust me, don't get overwhelmed. They're very simple, really, they really are. We're gonna go all the way down, and here where it says Mesh Outline, we'll turn that over to Mesh, so now we can see it really clearly. And let's get this ready for 3D printing, why not? Let's turn this on, that now gives it thickness. Let's say I only want this to be 2.5 millimeters, and let's say that pattern I'm not really happy with, so let's go to the Voronoi Seed. I'll just click that, change it up, there we go. Actually, you know what, I wanna go for the hexagon pattern instead, so we'll go up here to the generator style, and I'll click that, there we go. Actually, you know what? I want this to be a rectangle, so I'm gonna change the starting shape here to number two. There we have it. Now there's a whole bunch more settings and I'll show you them right now, but I just wanted to show you that in a nutshell is Shape Muse, but there's so much more that you can still do with it. So let's dive into that now. So now that you've had a little taste of Shape Muse, let's get into all of those settings. Now, yes, there's a whole bunch of settings, but trust me, they are very simple. Honestly, they're just questions. The first one being, what generator style do you want? Do you want this Voronoi pattern or do you want this honeycomb pattern? Then from there, you've got, hey, what starting shape do you want? There are six different starting shapes and they're all here. The circle, the rectangle, the parallelogram, the trapezoid, the kite, and your own custom outline. And right here, you'll see the starting shape. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the sixth custom outline, it disappears. Don't worry, we'll get more about the custom outline later on in this video. But for now, we'll go back to number one and you can see that all of the settings on how to change the shapes are right here as well. Now, there is another option option within talking about shapes, which is the shape property. So I'm just going to drag this out so we can see all of the settings. And we're going to also just move out here to the side a little bit. And the first one is keep boundary shape. What? You can turn off the outer shape, you can. And that gives you just the internal pattern that you've created. And this is so incredibly powerful because this means that you can use this tool to create some weird pattern that you can then cut away using a Boolean on whatever project you're doing. So for instance, I don't know, some sort of organizer that has your logo in this hexagon pattern, you could use this to do exactly that in Blender. There are so many possibilities here. and I truly want you to push the boundaries of it. So we'll turn this back on. The next one is shape smoothing. So right here, you can see it's pretty jagged. We could go up here and change the resolution of the circle. In fact, let's actually make it even worse. Let's make this really jagged. Let's go for maybe just 25. There we have that. Okay, so what happens when you do shape smoothing? Exactly what it says it smooths it out. Now this doesn't play well with all shapes. Anything that has a really sharp shape to it, it's gonna smooth that out. So for instance, if I turn this back off and we go over to the kite, which is actually, no, let's go to the parallelogram. Let's go for number three. And um, we have this right here. Well, what do you think is gonna happen when we do the shape smoothing to this? Well, we'll turn it on. Mm, that doesn't quite work out as we're expecting. Well, actually, no, don't look at it that way. Look at it as you now have even more shapes to play with. You can create smooth shapes with all of those shapes 
that we have inside of this modifier. Now, what about the pattern though? Well, inside of each of the generators, there is a way of pushing in that pattern inside, or here inside of the shape properties, you can just offset the size of this. Now, of course, if you're creating a coaster and you want this to be a 50 millimeter radius, doing this then makes it even bigger still. So this might not be the best option for you. Now, before we dive into all of the patterns and the settings inside of there, just want to quickly go over once again. Here, you can turn off the mesh because this here is the most performant way of playing around with shape muse, especially when you're really pushing the bounds of things. It might be best to turn this off and not working with mesh because this is then creating mesh. Also remember, here's the thickness so you can go absolutely wild with it. And I also wanna just give you a little quick tip. So I've got all of the shapes right here ready to go just so you can see them all at once. This is the custom out profile. I'll show you that in a moment. But if you wanna change all of these settings of all of them at the same time, remember that within Blender, you can hold down Alt and then make a change and I'll do it to all of them all the way around. Okay, let's go and dive into the Voronoi pattern and then the hexagonal pattern in some more detail. So let's start things off with the Voronoi pattern or the trypophobia inducer. So for all of you that have trypophobia, I'm really sorry. This is the best I could do. It's just a coaster, just keep remembering that. Okay, the first one here is you can have smooth or sharp Voronoi. So let's click that. There we have it, nice and sharp, or you can go ahead and smooth it all out. Now, there is another option for this. Right here, the Voronoi resolution, if I whack that all the way down to one, you'll see that it gives you sort of the same effect, but it's slightly different. This literally changes the resolution, the other one changes the generation style, if that makes sense. Okay, we'll whack that back up to 50, and then we've got the Voronoi density, as it sounds, this increases the density, but as you'll see, hey, there, if, if what, what's up with all these gaps? Why are there so many gaps? Well, that's got to do with the Voronoi size excluder. So what I'm trying to do here is this will remove anything that is too small. So if we bring this down, you'll see it brings in more small things, especially for laser cutting. You don't wanna have teeny tiny little holes to cut out. It just doesn't look good. And well, for 3D printing, that's also true. So we'll whack that back up. I'm gonna go for 30 here. Just be aware that if you're making teeny tiny jewelry, you're probably gonna have to whack this all the way down. If not, nothing's gonna be generated. Okay, then we've got the gap size, which is, well, the size between everything. As you can see, my performance is sort of going and getting a little bit chuggy at this point. Remember at that point that if you want that, turn off this mesh and then things will be super duper fast. So right here, we'll have the gap scale. See, I can go really quick and fast there and nothing to worry about. So I'm gonna put that back there. Let's turn the mesh back on just cause it's easier to see in the video. And now we've got the Voronoi inward scale offset. So if I go outward, it scales outwards. And if I go inwards, it brings the entire Voronoi pattern inside of the shape. So here, Things are getting a little bit small, so I'll bring this back up. And then we can see here that I can go bring it in, bring it out, you get to play around with it. This is that opposite one of the shape offset scale. So if you don't wanna change the actual scale and the size of your shape, you can use this setting instead. Now that you already know the Voronoi size excluder, we've got the Voronoi gen method. Now there's two generation methods for Voronoi. This one technically is more Voronoi Esque, and this one's a little bit differently. It gives you a little bit sort of different shapes. And then lastly, we have the Voronoi seed. Now this seed, I think it can go up to about 10,000. So I think you're gonna have plenty to play around with here by just changing the density, changing the seed, changing everything you want here. You can go make this sharp. You can go absolutely crazy with this. And that there is basically the Voronoi pattern in a nutshell. So let's go and dive over into the honeycomb one now. When it comes to the honeycomb, is actually pretty much exactly the same. We've got the hexagon radius, so how big these hexagons are going to be or how small you want them to be. Then we've got the actual gap scale, so the size of the gaps between each of the hexagons. And then we have the Y offset. So for instance, let's say I wanted this one here to be in the middle of my coaster. Well, that's why this Y offset 
basically exist. So I'll go here and I'll say, okay, oops, I, I want that to be there. I'm going to bring up my probability so I can see it properly. And then we can just sort of do it by eye, I guess is the best way that I can say this. And there we have it. Now we have it in the center of what I'm wanting here. The next one, which is this lovely hex inward gen offset, as you sort of guessed from the Voronoi one, I can go inwards or I can go even outwards with this. So this is the shape generation going inwards and outwards saying, hey, go inside of the shape so you don't have to change the shape. And the probability, as you've just seen, if this is at one, it's just gonna do honeycomb all over everything. If you want there to be more gaps, you bring down the probability, you can go all the way down up to you and then the seed is the seed as you know you can just change this up it goes up to about 10,000 and I think that's going to be enough options for you so now let's go and have some real fun with some custom outlines so to start it all off you need some custom outlines personally I really like using Envato elements and there are literally probably millions of outlines here. I quite like this little fire one here. So I've downloaded this and we're going to import that in. But remember, you can use something like Outline to SVG, which is another add-on of mine, completely for free, linked up there or down in the description, which basically lets you create outlines out of any mesh. Okay, now that we've talked about that, let's bring that in. So I'm just gonna go to File, then Import, and then it's this one here scalable vector graphic, not the SVG grease pencil. Click that and then let's go and find that file. Here's that little fire SVG that I have. So I'm gonna import that in and where on earth is it? Well, sometimes with these, they come in super tiny and there it is, very tiny. Let me show you just how tiny that is. That is the coaster. So very small indeed. Let's fix this. To start off with, I'm gonna go here into the object properties. I'm gonna change the fill mode to none. I'm also gonna right click and I'm gonna set the origin point to the geometry. Remember where that is because the origin point actually plays a lot when it comes to mesh muse and custom outlines. Then let's go to the item. I'm gonna go and scale this up maybe somewhere in the realm of 3000. Uh, let's see, that makes it 50 millimeters. Let's see how big that is. Come out here, press G. I'll press Shift Z so that it doesn't move up and down while I'm moving this. And there it is. You know what? I think I want it a little bit bigger still. So on the X, I'll go 100. This lets me now know the scale that I actually need for this. So I'm gonna press Control C, copy that there, paste that there. Brilliant, that is a nice big fire emoji thing there, coaster that I wanna play with. Now I need to apply this scale because the scale needs to be at one. To apply it, press Control A with it selected and apply the scale. Now it is looking a little bit jagged. So if we want to smooth this before we take it over there, all we have to do is here in that object properties, the resolution preview, you can bring it up or down. You could use this even as a shape. So I'm gonna put this to 25. I'm quite happy with that there. I'm also gonna rename it quickly. I'll press F2 with it selected, come on, F2, and I'll call this fire, just so it makes it really obvious. Now I'm gonna select my shape muse shape. We'll go over to the lovely properties of the modifier here. We're gonna whack this all the way to number six. Everything disappears. Oh no, where is it? All we have to do is say, hey, custom curve outline, select that fire. And there it is, it's sorted out. So first, let's talk about that origin point before I do anything else. So I'm gonna select this, go tab for edit mode, press A to select everything. I'll press G and I'll move this and you'll see how important that origin point is. And remember that on all the times that in the modifier it says scale, it's scaling from the origin point. So keep in mind where your origin point is. If not, things might not work quite as you expect. Okay, let's go and actually turn this into something. I think I feel like playing around with the Voronoi effect for this. So there we have it. Oh, okay, yep, that was the last settings that I had set. So let's clean this up. So here it is. I'm gonna make this a smooth Voronoi. Um, things are chugging a little bit. So I'm actually gonna turn off the mesh. There we go. Now I am know that I'm not gonna worry about this. Then here, I'm gonna have the excluder. Let's bring that up to 30. Let's bring down the Voronoi to somewhere, maybe somewhere like that. Yeah, I'm happy with that there. Now we can turn the mesh back on so we can see things nicely. Okay, is there anything else I wanna play around? Maybe let's change the seed a little bit. Wrong seed. 
this seed here. Ah, perfect. That's exactly what I want. Or maybe I want to just bring in that Voronoi offset just a tiny bit. As you see, it's doing it from the origin point. So that's because it's using the word scale. So just be aware of that. So I think I'm going to go for it about there. I'm quite happy with that. So let's do the same for the hexagonal one. Why not? So I'll select this, press Shift D. I'll go on the X, we'll bring it this way. Let's just quickly change that up. So we'll go up here, change the generator over to the hexagon one. Okay, that's looking good there. You know what I'm wanting to do. Let's go to the hexagon pattern. Here it is, let's create them. Let's make them, ooh, not the gap. I think I wanna make the radius bigger. Yeah, somewhere like that's looking, actually, you know what? That's already looking really good to me. I think I'm gonna increase that probability a little bit change the seed. That's looking perfect. I'm really happy with those. So now let me just quickly show you how to do this for jewelry, especially with the Voronoi pattern, because, well, I just want to show you the caveats that you've got to be careful with. So shift D, move this up, press shift Z, move that up there. Now I want to change the size of this, but that's going to change the size of these two. So let's apply these. Let's finalize them we will no longer be able to change things up. So just be aware of that. So in the shape muse here, you can click apply it or you can click here and click apply. So I'm just gonna select here, click apply that shape. Brilliant, go here, apply shape muse. And this is now legit shape muse set. That is now created. I cannot change those, but let's change the shape here. So I'm going to grab this. We're going to scale this all the way in somewhere like that. I'm going to apply that scale. Oh dear, what's going on here? This isn't quite how we're expecting. What is happening? Well, first let's go down here to the offset. We've got to set that to zero. We don't want any offset at all on this. And then, as I told you, we've got the Voronoi shape here and the Voronoi excluder. Now, before we do that, I know that this is going to take quite a bit of computing power. So I'm going to set this just to the outlines. And then I'm going to bring this all the way down. And there we go. There's all that lovely mess. Let's just bring that up a tiny little bit. I don't need the teeny tiny ones. I just want to have something like that. Then let's increase the density here a little bit. Maybe I'll go for, you know what? I was really liking there was a shape there that came up. That was, oh, let's just say I'm really liking this here. Let's turn that back on. Maybe I want to change the width of this to just be one millimeter thick. Okay, that's looking good there. How about I change the seed just a little bit more? find one that I also like, something like that. Maybe that's perfect, exactly what I'm wanting. Remember that if you wanna add a hole up here though, we are going to need to bring in some mesh. So let's go shift, right click. Let's then bring in quickly a cylinder. So here we have a cylinder right there. And I'm gonna just scale that on the Z, make that a little bit bigger. Then control A, apply that scale. And that's exactly where I want the pendant for this earring to go. So I'm gonna grab this, grab that, press control numpad minus. Remember that is the bool tool, edit, add on, look up ball tool, apply that there. And then that's now set to go. And that there is Shape Muse. And I cannot wait to see what you guys are again making with it. Remember, it's completely free and linked down in the description. If you want to support the project, by all means, that would mean a hell of a lot to me. And speaking of support, a massive thank you to my patrons. Truly, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to make Maker Tales. So if you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.